Ooh, welcome to my channel. So if you own a multimeter, like this one, with test probes, like this one, there will be a time where those test probes just aren't very handy. Um, example that comes to mind if you're working on the dashboard of a car, trying to find a uh, hot wire, positive wire. It's kind of hard to hold this up somewhere metal and probe with this. It's just kind of a nightmare. So I'm going to show you how to make a little... Uh, alligator clip extension for these that'll just plug right in. So these are some uh, alligator clips that I got off eBay. You can get them in like a 20 pack for, I don't know, a couple bucks. I've got a 16 gauge red and black wire. Um, this is a GXL type automotive wire. It'll handle the heat of soldering iron, so that's handy. I have some, a pair of F crimp pliers. Some people call them B crimp or open crimp. Let me see if the camera goes in tight enough so you can see what they look like. Should, but... Yeah, see? So, that's kind of what they look like. I um, have some heat shrink here. This is a double wall 2X, so it should shrink over our terminals. And these are some... can't pronounce the name, uh, terminals. Right, I forgot the name. But anyway, Terminal World, these are actually kind of expensive. Uh, they're a little, over, little under a dollar each, so kind of a lot for the tiny terminal, but they do work incredibly well. Like, they fit these little test probes perfectly. So, not too expensive to make these, and they'll come in handy, so let's dig in. So, every uh, pair of alligator clips you're gonna have, you get is going to be a little different. These particular ones just have a hole in the back. Some will have a screw. So what I'm going to do is just kind of run it out the end there and solder that on. I'm going to use the big side of our F crimp tool, or open barrel tool, to crimp that onto the wire. And it's a little loose, but it'll fly. I'll use the other side and make it a little tighter. That'll hold that down. Same thing for our red wire. Now my soldering iron is the soldering station over on my desk, so you're not going to watch me solder these on, but that's what I'm going to go do. Make sure it doesn't give us any problems as far as falling off goes. So that's our first step. Alright, just soldered the end zone. Curious what it looks like. Yeah, whatever works. So it'll we'll slip its little boot over. So there's our alligator clips. Now we just need to crimp on these little guys. All you gotta do is strip the wire a little bit. You can kind of gauge how much you gotta strip by the terminal there. That does it. Just a little more. Put those into the small crimp cavity. Crimp them home. And those are on. Now we just gotta trim them down to size. You don't need to use the heat shrink here, of course, but it makes kind of a good strain relief on the wire, so you don't bend that back and forth too much. You also have the option, of course, of soldering terminals onto the wire. Don't necessarily need to, but depending on what you're doing, it might make it a little stronger. Now, you're supposed to use a, a heat gun here. Don't really need to. Let's get it out with the barbecue lighter here. Yeah, I honestly use lighters all the time for this. Um, primary reason being if you're working under the dashboard of a car, trying to apply heat shrink tubing, it's pretty hard to get a big old heat gun in there. A little tiny lighter really is easier. It does come with a danger. Of course, an open flame under the dashboard. Not always a good idea, so you have to use your best judgment. That is basically it. So there's our little test probe extensions. Now if you cared, you could go a little bit more on heat shrink cover the entire terminal, but it's up to you. I find this to work fine. 
So we can turn on our multimeter here. Make sure we're getting a connection. So, all good. Let's, uh, let's try it out on something else. This is a controller I made for another project I'm working on. Kind of a lame project, but you'll see it on this channel eventually. So we can hook it up to where the main power is supposed to go. And when you hit one of these buttons, it activates one of the pins coming out the other side. It's right there. You can see it's working. Perfect. So, all in all, not too bad. You have to only use the one. You could, uh, or use both, you could only use one. So, like, say I want to make sure my switches over here are getting power. Connect that to my uh, positive feed there. And yeah, so far so good. And you can just go around testing things, even with one. So, I don't know, I find them pretty handy. Well, that's the end of my video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Um, part numbers will all be in the description, so check that out. Now, also keep in mind, this isn't something that you couldn't just go buy. I think you can buy an entire set of test probes for like 12 bucks that comes with all kinds of different options. But if you wanted to make your own or do some kind of custom arrangement, you know, the little terminals here, they, they really do fit quite well. So. I don't know, you could, at least you'll know how if you wanted to. But yeah, you could put ring terminals on here if you wanted, spade terminals, pretty much anything, honestly. So. And again, part numbers and links will be in the description.